right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, the latest physique update from Nick Walker. Now, we are about five weeks out from Nick Walker appearing at the New York Pro in May. And this front double bicep pose was posted by his coach, Matt Jansen, with the caption, Anti-Vacuum Vacuum Club. And we're going to talk about what he's talking about here in a second. But first, Nick Walker, obviously... One of his best poses. Crazy arms. He looks great in the front double bicep. The main focal point here being the midsection. Not hitting a vacuum pose. And again, we'll talk about that in a second. His legs, I think, look better here. He's posted some shots recently where his legs were getting some criticism. Not only did they look kind of downsized, but they seem like they're lacking separation. Deep separation in the quads that you can see You know, other guys that are doing the New York Pro or doing shows even further away than that have a much better level of separation in their legs. And this was something that Nick struggled with at the Arnold Classic that he lost to Samson Dowda. And this was also something that could probably be a result of the hamstring tear that he suffered, maybe not allowing him to train legs the same way that he used to. Maybe he's not back to training 100%, even for quads. But I do think his legs look better here. But that being said, I still think his upper body is just so freaky and round. His lower body still looks a little downsized here, even though it looks better. But upper body, incredible. Arms are huge. Front double bicep, midsection. Uh, I, I do prefer the crunched abs on Nick Walker to a vacuum pose. That's what we'll talk about next. So I believe this was a response to Milo Sarshev's latest post um, where he says, I really cannot understand people that think doing a vacuum uh, and showing your ribs is better than perfectly deep abs in a nearly perfect six pack. Since when is bodybuilding a bone show rather than a mus muscle show? Then he shows three photos of Nick Walker, one with him crunching his abs, one with him kind of expanding them, and then a superimposed image. So this is not actually Nick Walker, the last picture there. I believe that's actually Good Vito's midsection superimposed on Nick. So I do want to point out that, of course, that's going to look weird because that's not Nick Walker's midsection in the picture. But I do agree with Milos here. I think it's more impressive to be able to have really deep, separated, defined, crunched abs. And I think on a bodybuilder like Nick, that looks better for him in that pose. And another example would be a guy like Hadi Chupin. When you see him hit that crunched abdominal, you can see all the muscles pop, not just his abs, but his uh, intercostals, his serratus, his obliques, and you can really see a chiseled midsection. But I still think that people like to see both. We like to see an open bodybuilder that's able to do both. From a judging perspective, obviously the crunched abdominal is better because you can really see the abs. But I think showing the judges that also you're able to control it to that extent, and I think the fans really like it as well, I like bodybuilders that can go back and forth between the crunched abdominal and the vacuum pose. Derek Lunsford is an example of that. Hadi Chupin is an example of that. But I definitely do think it depends on the bodybuilder. Some bodybuilders, it looks a lot better than on others. I think it really depends on the physique. I think some bodybuilders, it enhances their physique. And some bodybuilders might look better just, just doing the crunched abdominals. I think that's a totally fair point. But I also think it's worth pointing out that maybe now we've gotten spoiled, so we forget that maybe 5 to 10 years ago, in the 2010s era of bodybuilding, there wasn't like one single bodybuilder that was hitting a vacuum pose or could hit a vacuum pose in open bodybuilding in that era, in this re this most recent era. It wasn't really until like the last five years that we started to see top open Olympians hitting vacuum poses. So I kind of disagree with the anti-vacuum assessment in general because I think it's a, it's a good thing for an open bodybuilder to be able to do. And I think Rich Gaspari put it really well in that comment section that it's kind of a lost art form and we saw it go away for a really long time and now we're kind of spoiled because we've got guys like Derek or your current Mr. Olympia you've got guys like Hadi your previous Mr. Olympia your two-time Arnold Classic champion that can not only hit a really good crunched abdominal but they can hit a crazy deep vacuum pose and the vacuum pose while it's not really for showing off the ab development it really shows off the taper well and how small someone's waist is really well. That's more what it's for, as well as showing off the abdominal control. So I like to see open guys that can hit it 
But I agree with the assessment that in many cases, the crunched abdominal is really what the judges are looking to see. And on some guys, like Nick Walker in particular, I think it looks better because Nick really has such deep chiseled abs. I think it really does depend on the bodybuilder, but it's nice to see top open Olympians that are still able to do it because for such a long time, who was doing it? And I don't think anybody's arguing that in open bodybuilding, the vacuum should be something mandatory. I think it should be mandatory in classic physique, but I think it's just nice to see open bodybuilders that are still able to do it. I don't think it should be mandatory or anything in open. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Where do you stand on the great vacuum pose debate? Now, next up in the news. I think a lot of people were really surprised to see how short the competitor list was for this weekend's Detroit Pro. Only six competitors, Martin Fitzwater, Gabriel Garapi, Vitali Ugonakabe, aka Good Vito, Ron Gordon, Harry Harris, and Justin Rodriguez. Now, one of the reasons why this is surprising is because they are offering $25,000 for first place. We've seen a lot of guys competing lately. A lot of guys are starting to you know, get in shape, prep for shows. The competition season's really kicking off. And I just think people are surprised to not see more guys interested in this show. And maybe there will be some last-minute entries. Tony O'Burton is a guy that I think a lot of people would like to see compete here. I think a lot of people would be surprised if he's not. Um, he did respond to a comment on the Bodybuilders Without Borders Instagram page where they were basically saying he should compete. And he responded, as tempting as it sounds, and trust I would, and trust I would, I have to fly to Reno and would have to fly back out right away. The only thing stopping me is the planning and figuring out the travel. So it does seem like Tonio is interested. Antonio did just compete in Brazil. He was second, only behind Rafael Brandao, who's not going to be here. So it would stand to reason he'd be the favorite to win the Detroit Pro. He still does need to qualify for the Olympia. And I think the odds of him winning the Detroit show while he's already in shape from Brazil, are probably higher than the odds of him beating Nick Walker at the New York Pro. Because remember, you have to win a pro show now to qualify for the Olympia. So if he wants to kind of nab that early qualification, Detroit, with only six guys, seems like a really enticing place to do that. However, if Tonio's not there, it seems like your top three is probably going to be Martin Fitzwater, Good Vito, and Justin Rodriguez, good veto coming off of a very impressive showing in Brazil. But Martin Fitzwater, I gotta say, his recent updates that he's been posting, he looks really impressive. And I think people forget he was battling with Andrew Jacked at that Texas Pro where he was runner-up to Andrew Jacked. And I think even as impressive as good veto was in Brazil, I don't want to undersell it because he was very impressive he wasn't as big as I thought he would be, especially in the upper body. Lower body was crazy. I don't think anybody is arguing with that. But his upper body and his overall stage presence, like his height, he just didn't seem like that big of a mass monster freak in that lineup because nobody else that he was competing against, especially the top two, neither Raphael nor Tonio are known for being big mass monster pros. In fact, they're almost kind of known as being the opposite, and Good Vito didn't look like huge next to them. So Martin, he's also a shorter guy. And in these updates, like I said, Martin looks very complete. He's got a very aesthetic physique for a shorter guy that could, you know, when, when these guys are shorter with these ultra-muscular physiques, it could go in a very blocky direction. With Martin, it hasn't gone that way. And I think he might actually be able to stand very well next to Good Vito because that's the thing is like, a lot of the social media hype for Good Vito was he's a mass monster freak. And his legs, again, they are. They are freaky. But I'll be interested to see Vito if he qualifies for the Olympia. I'd be interested to see him next to some of the bigger guys. Like Michael Crizzo or Andrew Jack or even a guy like Hunter Labrada. Or Samson Dowda or Nick Walker. I want to see him in a mix with guys that are known as being a little bit freakier pros than Rafael Antonio. Not to take anything away from Rafael Antonio, but guys that are known to be kind of mass monsters, to be freakier guys. Um, because Good Vito, as good as he looked, like I said, he didn't really have that mass monster factor except for the lower body. So I feel like it's easy to kind of look at this lineup and say, well, Good Vito is going to win this. But I don't know. I think a guy like Martin could stand with him. And I was even looking at some of uh, Justin Rodriguez's updates today. And Justin looks really impressive. His conditioning looks really impressive. 
And Justin is a bigger guy, too. I think he competes in the 260s, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm interested to see Good Vito next to some different guys, see him next to some guys that are bigger, and see how good he still looks next to them. But I guess you could still say he's probably the on-paper favorite to win this thing if Tonio's not in it. And by the way, Good Vito did post earlier today on his story that he is in the States. It looks like he's already arrived in Detroit. So he is here. He is able to compete. We will see him on that stage. It looks like the visa was no issue for him. So I think this Detroit Pro is going to be an exciting one. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. What are your top three predictions here for the Detroit show? Do you think Martin has a shot? Do you think Good Vito has it in the bag? Do you think Tonio will show up? Does Justin have a shot at redemption here? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.